Okay, we've put our reinforcing patches on around the lift strut fittings. We've turned the wing over now to where the top side is up. And a lot of people ask, where do you put the inspection rings? How do you put them? How do you know where to put them? This is one reason I really like to cover the bottom of the wing first with the top open. Now we can go right in from the top side and decide exactly where these inspection rings have to go. So what makes it very easy, you know, thing, these, these are a plastic ring. A lot of them will have some flashing around the edges from the mold. It's a good idea to just trim those edges off a little bit. When you end up gluing them down and putting your patch around them, it's going to lay in much smoother. Okay, now for inspection rings, they're your access to the internal part of the wing once it's covered. And areas that you want to be able to inspect are junctions such as your drag anti-drag wires here. We've got our junctions at each one of your compression strut areas. You've got areas where you've got pulleys. We've got areas where, not on this wing, but on the other wing, we actually have a P-dot tube comes out. We need access into those areas. So to make it real easy, because we can look through right from the top side, we can lay that ring in there and say, okay, where's a good location to put this ring so I've got access to this area if I need to inspect it or do some maintenance on it. So we can look right through the top of the wing. And this pencil mark we're putting on here will show right through the back side of that fabric. And once the airplane's completely covered and we're ready to start gluing our inspection rings on, they're already pre-marked. We, we know exactly where to glue them. We don't have to guess or get a bright light and try to shine through the fabric and figure out where that ring should go. There, that ring's marked. We can come right on down the wing. Here's another area. We actually have a junction here. The two fittings come together. We can do double duty. Put this ring about right here. You want to keep it off of the rib. Don't glue it over the rib section. But yet, when that's open, we can get into here to inspect these areas if necessary. So again, hold the ring in place, mark it with a pencil, and again, these soft lead carpenter pencils work quite well. They hold an edge for a long time. You don't have to sharpen them too often. And again, I mentioned earlier, it's not a good idea to use ink because some of the inks will bleed through your finish and uh, really don't want a nice pretty yellow cub that's got pencil lines showing where all your rings are marked. You know, some people seem to be under the impression that the only place you can put inspection rings is where the factory put them. Well, they, keep in mind, these rings are non-structural. They actually, they only provide access and they don't all have to be cut out. Just because there's a ring there doesn't mean it has to be cut open. But what it does is give you the ability to access this in the future. So we've got a strut fitting or compression drag wire fitting here. We also, right over here, we've got a fitting for the compression strut that goes through the fuel tank area. If you ever have to pull this gas tank, you're going to have to get into here to pull this bolt loose. And you can get some access through here with your hand, but it's really nice to be able to come up through the bottom so you can hold that nut and get the thing off. So what we're going to do is we're going to just locate two rings here. One for access here if you ever have to have it. And then one for access right here if you ever have to have this one. And again, this is more than what the factory did. But keep in mind when the factory does things, they're in the business of making money. Every extra ring they put on that they can get by without is just a few dollars extra they're going to make in labor cost and in the sale of the aircraft. So Piper and all of them didn't do any more than they really needed to do when it came to that. Okay, that pretty well takes care of down the front leading edge of the wing. We'll go ahead and we'll come around here to the trailing edge and again we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll go ahead and lay our rings out and mark them so we can access the these inspection areas if necessary. And keep in mind, again, that just because there's a ring here doesn't mean that it's going to ever be cut open. 
There are some areas that are always cut open for inspections, and that's around the lift strut fittings and some of those areas. Most of these rings will never be cut out for the life of this cover job. Yeah, what we're going to do before we put this ring on, we'll go ahead and figure out exactly where the cutout has to be for this aileron cable. And then, because we don't want this ring to interfere with the cut for the cable. Um, what I do a lot of times is save the fabric panel that comes out of here. And then you can use it for a template. And I actually have the template for this one. But somewhere in the process of uncovering these wings, the one for this area was thrown out inadvertently. So we'll put the aileron on here and get a good idea about where to go. We'll make a light preliminary cut in the fabric, pull the cable through it and decide exactly where to make the cutout. Then I'll come back and go ahead and mark this inspection ring so we can get in and have access to inspect these, uh, these pulleys. And also to lubricate them and check the cables during the annual inspections. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Some, uh, what I like to do on these again, chances are you're not gonna have to access these for cable removal. Like I said before, it's not really necessary to change for changing cables to take them out. But if a person chooses to, it's nice to have access into these areas. The only way to get into them is to be able to get into both sides. So again, these are inspection rings that Piper saw fit not to put in. But we can go ahead and add them. And you'll find that when they're properly installed, the nice reinforcing patch over them, they come up, they look very nice, they don't detract from the finish of the aircraft. Again, we'll mark the one for here. You see how easy this is to do, where we can look right down through the structure of the wing and see exactly where we want to put our inspection rings. Then we can come to this other side here. Way a little bit. And try to keep your orientation along the center line here real close. Once you get start to do these on the top side, if you see one of these is a little off in the fore and aft direction, you can move it a little bit because you've got these rings are giving you just a real good target of where to put it. Okay. There we are. So we've got inspection ring marks for our fair leads. We need to put one in here yet to inspect the pulleys. We're going to do that a little later and make sure that we've got our cable run right. We've got our inspection rings at all the junctions of our, of our drag and drag wires. So that's pretty much the layout of what we're going to need on this wing for inspection rings and, and uh, areas that might potentially have to be opened up to inspect the aircraft later. What we've done, we've stuck the aileron on and uh, just to get a preliminary fit on the cable, kind of eyeballed it, cut a small hole in the fabric here. And stick the cable through that. Okay, let's lay it back down. These ailerons have not been prepped or cleaned or anything for cover yet. We'll do that at a little later time. What we're going to do is just pull this up into place Take our bolt through there, and then we can pull some tension on the aileron cable itself. And you can see our alignment there is pretty close. One thing you want to avoid is having the cable rub on the fabric. You would think that the cable would rub a hole through the fabric, but in reality, what happens is this dacron will sit there and rub on that cable, and eventually will rub through the cable to the point that it will have to be replaced. I always like to set these up where the, it doesn't touch the cable at all. And later on we're going to demonstrate a little fair lead that will go over this and cover up this open area for the cable. And makes it uh, very easy to open this up to the point that you have nothing touching the cable at all. And yet this area is completely sealed off. 
you can see right here the travel of it. We really have pretty well relieved that cable area right there now. I'm going to mark with a pencil an area here that, uh, where I'm going to want to open this up a little larger. Got that area about right around through there like that. And then what we'll do is go ahead and glue a patch over that, reinforce it similar to what we did here, and then we actually will bend up an aluminum fair lead to come over this and enclose all of this area. Works really good, makes a very nice transition area instead of the old flat leather patch that tends to not do a real good job. Also, the little aluminum fair lead that goes over this is very effective at shedding any water and keeps a lot of moisture out of the wing. So we'll, we'll proceed to that here in just a little bit. Okay, another thing we can do, we've marked where we want to cut this out to give a little room. One thing we can do is brush a little bit of glue right down through the fabric here. We're going to be gluing over this area a little later anyway. So if we do this, what we've done now, we're going to kind of tie the pores of this fabric, the weave of the fabric together. Just wipe the surplus off. That's going to dry in just a very few minutes. And when we cut this, we get a nice clean cut and it's not going to start fraying and feather edging out on us. So we'll let that dry for a few minutes. We're going to cut that out. And we're going to go ahead and uh, see about getting the fair lead and, and all that in place here. Okay, we've uh, stuck the aileron in place here. Got our aileron cable th pulled through. What I did at the other end of the cable, I just tied it off so we can keep just a natural tension, see exactly what the, what the run is here for the uh, aileron cable. And you can see we've relieved this. There's nothing that's going to touch the cable now to cause wear. What I've got is a couple little templates I've made up. This actually was made out of a piece of balsa wood. And you can see that when this is in place, it'll actually form a bonnet over this. To do that, I've got some templates here I made over the years, designed to come around these and form the aluminum piece. What this is is old aluminum press plate that uh, I've got several sheets left over from years ago that the newspapers used to use these all the time to print the papers with. And this is about 10 thousandths of an inch thick. It's dead soft aluminum. If you can't find this, just go ahead and get some dead soft aluminum. 010 or even 016 will work. The lighter it is, the easier it's going to be to work. All of this is hand formed. And what we do is this is the template for the aluminum piece itself. We're going to go ahead and cut that out. Again, because it's soft aluminum, cuts real good with just a pair of scissors. We're going to go ahead and cut this out of here. Okay, now we'll take our scissors and cut this to the final shape. Okay, you might notice I've got actually two different templates. One is a little long and slender. This actually is one I would tend to use on the rudder out of fair leads because they come out at a very flat angle. The ailerons come out a little steeper, so this is a little fatter with a little higher pitch to it. Now to make these, just lay the form on it, pretty well center it over this little template and then just go ahead and hand bend it right around the edge of the material. Like I say, it really helps if you've got a nice soft aluminum to work with. Now, what we've got now is a nice little cone fitting here. What we're going to do now, we've got that, hold it nice and tight to the edges and then we want to start to make a break for the lip that will actually glue down to the fabric. And again, like I say, take the, the KISS principle here to keep it simple. And we go ahead and hand bend these. 
once it gets around about like that, we can actually put this down on a hard surface and pull it in and start to really crease the corners in on these. And lock the wing down. And again, all we're doing here is holding that in place, working these edges in here. We put the little wings on this that actually will glue to the fabric. Okay? Not very difficult to do. Makes a very nice patch pattern to go on that. As you can see, we can tighten the bend a little bit if necessary. This will actually work a little better if it is tightened up some. And we want to arrange that so the cable is not going to hit on it. If it does, we can always trim this back a little bit if necessary. Take the sharp corners off of it. Okay. Then I want to make sure this fits down nice and tight here on the nose of it. Okay, now we've handmade a fair lead guide, not a fair lead, but a cable exit guide here. And that'll glue into place right on the fabric. And then once that's glued in place, we'll use this and actually cut a fabric template then that comes over and finishes all of this off and ties everything together. These look fairly fragile. I say they're only, uh, they're dead soft, ten thousandths. I've got these on aircraft that have been flying for 20 years and they still look just like the day they were installed and covered. So they're very durable. Once the fabric's glued over them, tucked in and everything's tied together, uh, they're amazingly strong and withstand the service very well. Okay, we'll go ahead and get this ready to glue on and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, we've got our patch, our little cover fair lead here made. And do is just hold that in place. We're going to pencil mark around that. We'll know where to lay our glue. That gives me a reference for our glue. We're going to pull that off of there. And you can see my initial mark of where I thought maybe that cable had to come out was not in the right spot. It's a good thing we didn't cut it out there. But it's really important if you don't know exactly where to put it, get that aileron on there. So you can really get a good look at it and figure out where it has to go. Now we're going to go ahead and just put a nice coat of glue right into the fabric here. Now we're going to cover this whole area with glue. That'll help stabilize this and tie this whole area of fabric together. Because we don't actually have a cloth patch over this, there's really no need to put one over it. This ties everything down really well. Now we'll also put some glue around the perimeter of our little cover piece here. Put a nice little coat of glue on that. And then while that's still wet, we're just going to lay that right down into place there. And we don't have 100% contact all around. It's not a real big issue because when this glue dries, we'll be able to push that into place and it'll still be anchored down and have a very tight fit to the fabric there. Wipe a little bit of spoilage off from around the edges. Okay, we're just going to let that sit now until that dries. It'll be just a few minutes and we can come back and work on that some more. Okay, while our aluminum piece is drying, what we'll do is go ahead and lay out our our finished patch that goes over that. And this is an old pattern I've had for a number of years. Very easy to make. If you make stuff like this, I suggest you go ahead and make yourself patterns, label them, and the next time you do a project, you've got the patterns ready to go. Now some of you are probably saying, well this is the only one I'm ever going to do. 
I can remember that too, a number of years ago. And I can tell you, never say never. Because uh, 30 or 40 projects later, you're going to find out that you really kind of miscalled. And we'll take our pinking shears here. And go ahead and cut our patch. Again, I like to pink all the edges. Again, these are not mandatory. Something I prefer. It's a nice finish. This is not original. If you're doing a, an original restoration, you probably wouldn't want to do this. You want to go ahead and cut your your leather patches and glue them down, but you'd use the same technique to glue that we did here. You mark around the patch, glue it, get the glue in the patch, put it in place. Okay, while we're waiting for our little fairly exit to dry there, I put some glue on the fabric a little earlier, and I said there was a simple method to remove that if you have a mistake or get drips on the fabric while you're working on it, laying tapes and so forth. It's very unique because, like say, we put everything on the bare fabric. We actually, this little eraser here is, what it is, is a uh, piece of gum eraser, and it started out life as an eraser for sanding belts. They come in a brick, this big square, and about, oh, about 10 inches long, put these in a bandsaw and just cut them into <clears throat> about half inch squares. This is a, a very uh, gummy type of uh, rubber and it sticks to this it sticks to this glue quite well. And what it does we get a spot like that on the fabric we can actually take this eraser and drag it across it and it will attach itself still firmly enough to that glue that it'll cause it to shear off right at the line of the fabric. What we've done now without solvents or anything, we've erased that drop off of there. All we have here is a spot where the glue has sealed the fabric. Absolutely will never show through your finish. You can do the same thing to this other one. And these are fairly extreme here. A small drop is just a few, a two or three or four swipes usually and they're cut right off. So anyway, very easy to get rid of a mistake like that. At the end of the day, anybody that's ever done fabric in the past knows that you get a lot of glue on your hands. You can see I've got very little on me from all the gluing we've been doing. Any that's on there, again, you use this eraser in the same manner and actually just rub the excess glue, dried glue on your fingers and on your hands, just erase it right off. So you don't need to use solvents or anything to clean yourself up. Very, uh, very easy to use. Okay, we're back to our exit here for the aileron cable. That's been glued down about six or seven minutes. You can see it's already pretty firmly attached. The glue's not cured yet, but it's holding it well in place. And this is the fabric patch that's going to go over the top of this. What we want to do is fairly well center this. And we'll leave a little surplus off of the back edge. We'll actually tuck that under to go ahead and glue it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to brush glue onto this area and then lay this patch into that. This is what finishes that off and really ties everything together here. We'll brush a little glue onto here. We'll come up past the edges just a little ways. Like that. We're also going to wipe a little glue up on the inside edge here because we'll be tucking up a little bit of surplus fabric into there in a little bit. Attach this, lay it into place, center it. This is one of the few times that you actually are working with wet glue. That right down into place. Lays in nice and firm. Again, we're going to take some glue and brush right down through this. You can see how nicely that's laying into the aluminum patch. And go ahead and brush the edges down here real well. Now again, while that's still aggressively wet, 
We want to wipe the surplus off of that. You have to be kind of careful when you wipe. You don't want to press real hard because you want to make that fabric start scooting around. Okay, that side looks really good. We're going to wipe this surplus off of the side of the aluminum cover here so we don't want that to over dry on us. Now we can go ahead and brush some more into here. You notice we're using a wet coat, but on the other side of the coin, it's not, a, not just a drooly wet wet, because if it is, you've got a lot of surplus there you have to try to mop up. and just makes it a little more difficult to do. Again, we're going to put some glue on here, because that eventually is going to cut, tuck up underneath, and that'll finish the end of this off. Again, we're going to wipe the fabric. Notice if you wipe toward the edge, you're going to get a cleaner wipe. Got a little bit right on that extreme edge there. It didn't glue down through it real well. So I'm going to lift that up, put a little glue under there just to help it. So what we want is a good 100% bond. It's real easy to tell. Again, if you've got that little white area, you know that you've not penetrated that fabric. Right there, we can actually just rub it through with our finger. There it is. A little bit right up here. Okay. All right. Just going to let that dry. We have now is a very nice patch on there. Fabric's going to be well stabilized, and you're not going to be getting a lot of water into the wing through that aileron exit. Okay, our cover patch here is dried, and what we're going to do now is just make a little cut right here in the corners. I explained earlier this would cut and then tuck up in underneath. Now we've got glue on there, so all I have to do is just start the fold here. We'll push that right up inside. Use firm finger pressure, and that joint's made. A little bit of heat with the iron. Okay, we've tucked our fabric up into here. Iron's hot. What we're going to do is just kind of come right around the edge here. Iron these edges down a little bit. There's always a little bit of rough edge around the tape, pinked edges. Take the point of the iron. We're just going to make a little pass around there that just lays those down and smooths them out. Makes them lay real nice and flat. And just a quick little pass. We don't want to shrink the material. There, that's pretty well a finished item there. Again, here you can see where we laid marks for inspection rings just so we can get in to inspect the pulley areas. Here's one here. If you ever have to cut it out, you can inspect the back side of this lift strut fitting here. You can get in to access that. We're going to do the same thing here. Just iron the edge of this down. And now in the future, when we start ironing, we won't be ironing up over this patch. We'll be ironing right up to the edge of the patch. And because that's securely glued, and that glue joint won't slip, all the tension is transferred into this patch, and we become the full tension, but we're not going to pull any of these edges away. We've got a nice bond on there. That's going to make a real nice finish around this strut fitting when the aircraft is painted and ready to be assembled.